Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time and uh, your attention as I continue to learn my ancestral, ancestral tongue, the Igbo language of Southeast Nigeria. I've been trying to do this video for quite a while, many weeks, but haven't been able to do so. Just been hindered by time and other factors in life, but I do try to continue to use the tongue and the language every day. And it's, of course, it's a beautiful thing um, to know your heritage and to be able to physically go and uh, lay eyes on your people. I've been to Nigeria twice, but not to Igbo land. So uh, hopefully on my next occasion, I'll be able to go literally to my ancestral homeland. And of course, I was, you know, really uh, disappointed, you know, being that I was so close being in a quiet bomb state. There are some, of course, Igbos there, but that's like right next door. So, you know, being from the United States, being in Alabama, I was like in Alabama, but uh, all I had to do was get to Mississippi and I was there. So uh, hopefully I get a chance to go there on another occasion. The good Lord lets me uh, I live and see this day. But one of the things that you always encounter in language is the physical characteristic of people. Uh, so I have about uh, 35 different terms that I'm going to go through right now that uh, describe the different ways that people uh, look. So we'll go through that right now. All right. I wanted to start off with one of the words, of course, coming out of my book, Ebo 101, but um, it's also in relation to how I feel. And this one, I think I'll dedicate this slide to both my mother as well as my wife, who all, are both also been traced back to the Igbo tribe of Southeast Nigeria. <coughs> but in order to say that someone is attractive, you would say, idiota nanya. Again, that's idiota nanya, attractive. And what you're saying is uh, the following out of the root words, that, that I that has a dot underneath it. That's not how you pronounce it in Igbo. I'm just making it simple by calling it by English letters. Um, but the I with the dot underneath, you pronounce that as an E in English. So that's why you hear me saying E D O T A N A N Y A for attractive. So again, you're saying E, which means you, and D, which means R. And ota means actually sweet, something good to you. And nanya means in the eye. So you're basically saying you are sweet in my eye, which means attractive in the way that the Igbo mind uh, thinks and describes things. So, of course, I put a beautiful Igbo woman on there. Like I said, this slide is dedicated to my wife and my mother. You are all uh, beautiful women. And so we'll go on. So idi ota nanya, attractive. All right, let's move on to the next one, which I'm fearing is going to start happening to me soon. It's, uh, e, it's, it's pronounced Isi Inquacha, bald. Isi Inquacha, bald. And listen closely to the way that I'm saying Isi. Uh, remember that Igbo is a tone language. So that means the way you say things gives it a different meaning. So when you want to pronounce uh, the word easy, you want to pronounce it as high as you can. If you're doing music, you're thinking about in the soprano type range is how you pronounce that word in order to say it correctly so someone understands you. So it's easy in kwacha, easy in kwacha. So again, easy means head and in kwacha means bald. So a head that's bald in short in English means bald. All right, beard is afoano, afoano beard. And what you're saying is afo, which is hair, and ano, mouth. So hair on the mouth in the Igbo mind means your beard. So afoano beard. Okay, beautiful. Uh, beautiful is ima umma, ima umma is beautiful. I don't know how to break that down in this literal word translation. Just, uh, I just trust what it means. It's ima umma, beautiful. Okay. Now this one is how you describe black hair. Now remember 99.9% .9 of the time in Igbo, you give the subject in the description afterward. It's just like Spanish. Like uh, in Spanish to, to say a car is blue, you would say uh, car blue, but in English you would say blue car. So Igbo is the same way as Spanish is. 
uh, you typically give the uh, subject and then you give its description. So that's what we're going to do here to describe black hair, the hair that's the color black. Intutu means hair. EC, as you know, means head. So you're saying hair on the head. Then that last word means, uh, or is pronounced oji, oji. So you're saying intutu EC oji, black hair. Intutu EC oji, black hair. And we'll do the same thing. We'll come to brown hair, red hair, all of that. All you're doing is basically is changing that last word. All of it would continue to be in two two e c and then whatever the color you're saying. Okay, now this is why I warned you earlier about pronouncing e c real high in a high tone to say head, because you can also use the word e c. For blind and if you notice when I said EC for a blind person I drop my tone so again EC is head EC is blind okay so blind a blind person is EC all right we'll move on as mentioned all we're doing is changing the color of the hair as you know when we study black hair uh, it was into to EC for hair on the head and odo now is for blind. So to say a blind person is in tutu e c odo. Again, in tutu e c odo, which means blind hair. So you're basically saying hair on the head that's yellow, blind hair. In tutu e c odo, blind hair. Okay, now we're gonna uh, start describing like an eye color. Uh, you've already been introduced to the word earlier, anya. Remember we said in the eye when we're talking about um, uh, the attractiveness of a person? Uh, we said nanya, that means in the eye. Well, now we're just saying anya, which is the eye itself, okay? So say blue eyes, you would say anya anono, blue eyes. So anya is eyes, anono is blue. So eyes that are blue are blue eyes. So, anya anono, blue eyes. Brown eyes. All you're doing again is changing the second word because you know anya means eyes. And so to make the eyes brown, you would say anya ora. Anya ora, brown eyes. So again, anya ora, brown eyes. Ora is brown. Okay, again, we're just talking about hair. And so it's the same words you already know, into to easy, which means hair on the head. And now all you're doing is adding the color at the end, it's aura. So into to easy aura is brown hair. Again, into to easy aura, brown hair. All right, curly hair is a little bit more complicated, but it's the same topic. I mean, same uh, concept, let me say it correctly. Again, in tutu isi is what? It's hair on the head. In tutu isi, but you would add to make it curly, the description curly, is mbakara baka. Mbakara baka. So what you're saying then is in tutu isi bakara baka. Curly hair. So again, in tutu hair, isi head, mbakara baka, curly. So that's what you're saying. Hair on the head that's curly in short in English, you mean you're just saying curly hair. In tutu we see bakara baka, curly hair. Okay, dark. When somebody is of a dark complexion, complexion there is words for that in Igbo as well. Because Igbo is it's, it's interesting because um, for the people that we look like the most that I've seen on the African continent, it is Igbo. As far as black Americans go, they come in every uh, color, just like black Americans come in every color from light to dark. And so you have uh, terms to describe the complexion of a person, even in Igbo. And so what you would say when someone is of a dark complexion, it would be idioji. If you remember, OG means black, but OG also can just mean dark as well. So again, it's E-D-O-G, dark. And basically breaking that down, that means E, which is that I with the dot underneath, a diacritic we call that. 
uh, D means R and OG means dark or black. So you're saying you are dark or you are black. And that means dark skin in uh, Igbo. So E-D-O-G dark. Again, E-D-O-G dark. To describe someone that uh, is actually deaf, that in other words, they cannot hear, it would be impachienti. Again, impachienti. And what you're saying is literally, impachi means locked, you know, like they can't be used. And inti means ears. So you're literally saying locked ears, which means deaf, deaf, excuse me, in Igbo. So, Impachienti, deaf. Okay. Divorced. You actually kind of have to describe what it means instead of just one word in Igbo. So to say someone is divorced, you would say, Iba alukwayim. Again, that's Iba alukwayim. So you're saying Iba, which means to cast or put into a status of something. And aloquayim, which means of not married. So you're saying you're cast into a status of not married, which means divorced, you know, simply in, e in English. So it's iba aloquayim, divorced. And really you're saying, I have been cast into a state of not married. Okay? You're saying it personally. I am not married in so many words. So it's uh, iba aloquayim, divorced. All right. Uh, there is a word for what we like to call politically correct in the uh, U.S. as being uh, elderly or old. Uh, but in Igbo, you would say okenye. And we shouldn't complain about that. It's a blessing to be able to get a hold. Amen, somebody. So it's okenye, elderly. Okenye, elderly. Now, remember again. The letters that look like E's in Igbo, you pronounce them as an A. So that's why I'm saying Okane Ye. Okane Ye. Elderly. Tried to make this slide a little bit more personal. Uh, my mother's on the line, so she recognizes this picture. This is her grandmother and my great grandmother. As we mentioned earlier, EDOG was you are dark, but in this case, my great grandmother was very fair skinned, or I like to say in Black America, she was a light skinned woman. Uh, so to say that in Igbo, like I told you, in in, in the Igbo people, you have color ranges from light to dark and everything in between. So you have concepts to describe this thing. So you have Idiacha for fair skinned, Idiacha fair skinned. One of the, the funny stories that when I went to um, Nigeria the last um, the last trip and um, the people had different views of what they thought I was. When I first got there, they thought I was an Egyptian. <laughs> I guess my features were so strange. They figured out some type of African, uh, but didn't know where from. So some, some was thinking uh, Egyptian. Some was uh, so wild out there. They were thinking I was Lebanese. Uh, and then also those that actually looked at me closely were like, okay, yeah, he does look Nigerian. He's just a little fair because <laughs> it's not like uh, in black America, they don't say light skin and that kind of stuff. They say fair for uh, a lighter skinned person. And so basically to describe someone as a lighter skinned person in Igbo, you would say idiacha. And again, that, uh, you would, that I looking character, you would say E, which means you, D, which is the D-I, what you're looking at, it means R, and Acha means white. So you're saying Idi Acha, which means literally you are white, meaning that you are fair-skinned. So I found this very, very humorous. And of course, that was another thing I encountered when I was in Nigeria. My, my traveling buddy and Dale Ruffin was with me and a man uh, asked another Nigerian, he said, what are these white men doing here? We took that. We were looking at him like, who are you talking about? But, you know, white over there means a whole different thing. Uh, white, we were among the Bibio tribe as well. Uh, not not the same as the, uh, the Igbo, different people. But um, white means foreigner. So it doesn't matter you know, what your actual skin color may be. 
if you're not born over there, you're often called a white man, you know, and they were, we were called white in Obibio. I can't, Obibio, I can't, you know, pronounce, you know, exactly what that was uh, then. But it's interesting, you know, some of the culture and, and the things and the norms of people when you're looking on the outside in and, you know, what, what you experience over there. But I thought it was, it was still a fun experience, not offensive by any form or fashion when he understood what they were actually saying unto us. All right, so again, getting back on track, uh, fair skin or light skinned in Black American English would be idiacha, fair. All right, let's continue on. Aboba means fat. Aboba, fat. Okay, or overweight. Aboba, fat. Okay, gray hair, which I have quite a bit of that down, probably more my beard than even my head. But uh, remember, uh, isi means head and awo uh, means gray. So you're saying a gray head means gray hair. So it's isi awo, isi awa. Let me get it right. I mispronounced it. Isi awa, gray hair. Again, isi awa, gray hair. Okay. Green eyes. Uh, we're back to the eyes now. Uh, remember, anya means eyes. Ahihia indu, that means green. It's interesting because ahihia is also used for grass. So things that um, are, are green in nature, you always see that word ahihia. All right. So to say someone has green eyes, you would say anya ahihia indu. So you're saying anya eyes and ahihia indu are green. So remember the Subject comes first and then the description. So you're saying eyes that are green. In English, we turn it around and say green eyes. So Anya Ahihia Indu, green eyes. All right, handsome. And I'm hoping my wife is saying this about me. Uh, but handsome would be Umawoke. Umawoke. So what you're saying is, is uma, which literally in Igbo means beautiful, but you know, if we want to put it back in the masculine terms in English, that means handsome. And woke means man. So you're basically saying, you know, it's kind of humorous. You're saying beautiful man, but you know, in uh, English, that means handsome man. Okay. I'd rather be called handsome man. We'll, we'll translate it that way. But it's uma woke handsome. Again, uma woke handsome. Okay, my mother's eyes. Uh, this is Anya Hazel. In other words, you just said eyes that are hazel, which is hazel eyes. Anya Hazel, hazel eyes. Okay, this is one that kind of violates the rule. You actually put in the description before the subject on this one. So to say someone has long hair, you would say Ogo Logo. That means long hair. Ogo Logo. And then, as you know, in tutu means hair. So you literally just said long hair. So it translates perfectly back into English that way. So ogo logo in tutu, long hair. Again, ogo logo in tutu, long hair. Okay, to say you're married is way uh, less complicated than say you're divorced that we studied earlier. Uh, to say you're married is ilodi. Excuse me, I said it wrong. Iludi is married. Eludi married. So again, Eludi married. And Lord wills, about a month, it'll be about 19 for me and my wife, Jocelyn. Time flies, as I say. All right, mustache is Aji Ebu Bere Ano. And what you're saying, literally, you're saying Aji, which means hair, and Ebu Bere Ano means lips. So you're saying hair on the lips, which means mustache. Aji Ebu Bere Ano, mustache. Another way of saying someone is elderly, we already looked at Okenye, but you can also say Ochie for old. Ochie, meaning old. Again, Ochie, old. Okay, pregnant. You know, it's a lot of times when I'm noticing the Igbo, you don't just say the word, but you actually have to like put the person in it. Uh, when you say someone is pregnant, you're saying idi ime, idi ime, pregnant. So what you're saying is is e, which means you, 
D equals R and E may pregnant. You're literally saying you are pregnant, which is basically simplified in English is just saying pregnant. Okay, so it's E D E may pregnant. Again, E D E may pregnant. Short. Short. What I've definitely would be. We we've got uh one of my old um basketball teammates and Mike Leha on here and as he probably can remember, I was normally always the shortest guy on the basketball court. So this actually uh, describes me. So short is albere, short. Albere is short. And thanks for joining, Mike. Okay, redhead can be said a couple ways as we get closer to the, uh, wrapping this thing up. Uh, as you know, head is easy. And the two words are actually pronounced may may. So you're saying EC may may. That means redhead. So EC is head and may may is red. So you're saying head that is red is redhead. EC may may, redhead. But we can also do it like we did the other ones. Remember, we talked about black hair, we talked about blonde hair and others. You can do the same thing with uh, redhead in a different way. You can say in tutu, which is hair, EC head, so hair on the head. And you can also say abara obara, which means red also. So you can also say in tutu we see abara abara, which means hair on the head that's red. So you got two ways of saying it. Isi may may or in tutu we see abara abara for redhead. All right, uh, for short hair, uh, which Halle Berry made real famous back in the 90s. Uh, you already been introduced to these two words, so it's abere, which means short, and intutu, which is hair. So literally, short hair translates perfectly into English as short hair. So it's abere intutu, short hair. Abere intutu, short hair. All right, slim body, which I no longer have, but had for a long time. But to say slim, you actually have to describe a concept in Igbo. And this is one where we haven't encountered this yet, but you have to drop a letter. When you're combining some words in Igbo, just like we do in contractions in English, I always like to use the word do not. You drop some letters. So to combine uh, do, do not, you also say don't. So you start spelling it different. So it's the same thing in this case when you put uh, the two words together that ainwe and albere uh you drop the e in ainwe in inwe excuse me inwe so you would say inwa bere aho you wouldn't say uh inwe albere aho no you would have to drop a letter so that's where it gets a little complicated on some of the words uh, so it again would be inwa bere aho for slim. And what you're literally saying, it comes from the root words, uh, inwe, which means having, albere, which you know means a small, and ahu means body. So you're literally saying, if you're trying to describe somebody as slim, you're saying a person having a small body. So it's, again, inwa bere aho. So inwa bere aho, aho, slim. Inwa bere aho, slim. All right, I found this one to be very, very true and very, very real in the way that you describe straight hair among the Igbo people. In other words, straight hair among black people. They literally uh, tell you exactly what the, what's on their mind in the Igbo language when it comes to straight hair on a black person because it's not natural. All right, so you'll get what I'm saying if, you, if you've ever used a straightening comb. You know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so what you would say to say straight hair, which again was the most interesting thing I probably studied in Igbo so far, in tutu, which you know means uh, hair, then you would say mbatiri bati. Now, uh, that word batiri bati means stretched out. And anybody that knows anything about straightening uh, black folks hair, you are literally stretching it out in order to make it straight. So that's why I thought that was such a humorous, but so real a way of explaining when somebody has uh, straight hair among the Igbo people. Uh, so again, it would be intutu batiri bati, which is straight hair. So batiri bati means stretched out. 
But again, this is another one of those complicated words that batiri bati. You would want to say it batiri abati, but you have to drop that a in abati. So that's why I'm saying batiri bati instead of batiri abati. So again, let me get it all together so it makes sense. So it's in tutu batiri bati for straight hair, or in other words, hair that has been stretched out straight hair. Okay. All right, a few more. Uh, you've been already introduced to this term, ogologo, meaning tall. Ogologo means tall. All right, for a tanned person, again, you have to describe the person instead of just saying tanned. You're saying iditanu, which is tan. You've been introduced to this already. E means U, D means R, and tanu means tanned. So you are tanned is what you're saying, which in English in short means tanned. So iditanu, tanned. All right. In order to describe the color white, the um, word that you would use would be acha. And we've been introduced to that uh, earlier when I described uh, the, the skin tone of my great grandmother. So it's acha, white. Acha, white. All right, last one, and the lesson is yours. This is for young people, and it's usually used for people that are adolescents, 12 to 20 years old. And it literally means those that are growing up. So what you were saying is, onye na toto, young. You're actually dropping all those E's in there. I have no idea why it's done, but it's done. But onye means a person, na uh Na, a, na toto means growing up. Let me get it right. So it's a person that's growing up, meaning young. So onye, onye na toto, young. Again, onye na toto, young. So thanks for joining me. That's the lesson for today. And hopefully you're practicing your Igbo tongue and be able to converse with me one day because I'm still trying to be fluent. But I'm still very young in studying the language. So I'm going to be doing a little bit over a year now. But God bless you and have a good night. Bye-bye.